So today we'll be going over what's called principal stress and maximum shear stress. Now this is going back to analyzing that element in the previous video known as plane stress transformations. And like I mentioned, this is where we analyzed an uh, element and then rotate it at some angle to then project the normal and shear stresses from the original x, y axis to the x prime, y prime axis. So let me go ahead and draw out that element. So here's the element that we're analyzing from some object um, experiencing some loading conditions. And we have the x axis as well as the y axis. And we have all the normal plane stresses. We have the sigma x along the x direction and sigma y along the y direction. And we have the shear stress here. Keeping in mind this is a static equilibrium problem. So all the sum of forces is equivalent as well as this element is not rotating. So all these shear stresses here are equal and opposite. So for the plane stress transformations, we would rotate this element at some angle theta and then project these normal and shear stresses onto this new coordinate system, such as the y prime axis and the x prime axis. Similarly, when it comes to principal stresses and maximum shear stress, we are also rotating the element. However, we are rotating it at an angle that we have the maximum normal stresses developing as well as the maximum shear stress that develops within that element. So we solve for the angle at which the normal stresses are maximum as well as the shear stress is maximum. So now this element is rotated by theta p, p denoting the principal stress where the we have the maximum normal stresses developed on the element. And so it's rotated about that angle and the stresses, the maximum stresses are denoted as sigma 1 and sigma 2. Now one important thing to note when the we have the maximum normal stresses developed or the principal stresses, we have absolutely no shear stress. So this is something important to note. When we have the principal stresses, we have absolutely no shear stress developed about this angle specifically. Now another thing to note, we have this theta p1 since it's the angle from the horizontal to the first um, principal stress. Then the other angle for to the second principal stress would be theta p2 is equal to theta p1 plus 90 degrees since that's their what they're offset by. So this is another relationship to keep in mind. And the equation to solve for this angle would be tangent 2 times theta p is equal to tau xy the shear stress divided by the normal stress along the x direction take away normal stress along the y direction divided by 2 and of course you could always just solve for the unknown theta p here given the normal stresses in the original xy plane now moving on to the maximum shear stress that's going to be developed at what angle will it be developed let's go ahead and draw that element and now so now this element is rotated where the shear stress is maximum and this we denote it as theta s one and another important relationship to con to remember is that this angle theta s one is equivalent to theta p1 plus 45 degrees so this the angle where the shear stress is maximum is only offset by 45 degrees from where the we find the principal stresses or the maximum normal stresses so that's another important thing to remember so here's the maximum shear stress now the only difference is when we have the principal stresses or the maximum normal stresses developed right where the shear stress is equal to zero in this case when the shear stress is maximum we do have a uh, normal stress developed in this case going to be the average so here is the average right sigma x plus sigma y divided by two and so here is the equation to solve for the maximum angle for the angle at which the maximum shear stress is developed. So tangent to theta s is equal to negative sigma x take away sigma y divided by 2 divided by tau xy. And now 
going back to the plane stress transformations, you go ahead and solve for your theta s, theta p, plug it into your sigma x prime, sigma y prime, and so forth. And then you can actually solve for the principal stresses and also for your maximum shear stress developed. So I'm going to go ahead and just write out the equations here. So for your principal stresses, sigma 1 and 2 is equivalent to sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus or minus the square root of sigma x take away sigma y divided by 2 squared plus tau xy squared. So one thing to know is sigma 1 is always going to be greater than the second principal stress, sigma Two. So sigma 1 most likely will be the plus, sigma 2 is going to be the minus. So that's one thing to keep in mind about this relationship. And for your maximum shear stress is equal to the square root of sigma x take away sigma y divided by 2 squared plus tau xy squared. And this is the maximum shear stress developed. And of course you have your average which is... It was previously ran up here. So these are mainly the equations that you're going to be utilizing to solve for the principal stresses as well as the maximum shear stress developed. Now keep in mind the angles um, that the principal stresses are developed as well as the angle that the maximum shear stress developed. So this is a very important concept for design, right? We want to see what are the maximum normal stresses when we rotate an element as well as the maximum shear stress just to make sure the object won't fail under certain loading conditions. So this concept is very important for design. So let's go ahead and do an example. For this problem statement, we have the state of stress at a point is shown on the element. Determine A, the principal stress, and B, the maximum in-plane shear stress and average normal stress at the point. Specify the orientation of the element in each case. So we see here we have this element with the appropriate, in this case we have a compressive stress. So we're going to have sigma x being negative 30 KSI. Sigma Y is obviously zero, and the shear stress along the XY plane is negative 12 KSI because this shear stress is going downwards along the Y direction, in other words, negative here instead of upwards. So now let's go ahead and solve for the principal stresses, and of course also solve for the angle in which the principal stresses occur. So after plugging it into the principal stress equation, we get negative 15 plus or minus 19.2 KSI. Since we know sigma 1 is greater to sigma 2, we have sigma 1 being equal to 4.2 KSI and sigma 2 being equal to negative 34.2 KSI. Now the question is, which one is going to be the normal stress along the new X prime direction and which one will be the normal stress along the Y prime direction. And this is where we're going to use the equation for the theta P. So the theta P is equal to the tangent inverse of tau XY divided by sigma X take with sigma Y divided by 2. All this divided by 2 to finally solve for that angle. And so plugging in the values here give us. So we get 19.3 degrees. Now this is where we could go ahead and use the plane stress transformation equations, plug in this theta value and solve accordingly. Let's go ahead and do that. So this is the plane stress transformation equations, right? We have one for sigma x prime, we have another one for sigma y prime. And so what you do is once you solve the angle for the maximum principal stresses, you go ahead and plug it in this equation with all the other variables and see which value is for the x prime direction. Is it the negative 34.2 KSI or is it the 4.2 KSI? And that will identify which is your um, sigma 1 along what direction is your first principal stress and along what direction is your second principal stress. So let's go ahead and solve for this equation. Let me plug in all these values and let's see what we get. And we get the sigma x prime is equal to negative 34.2 k psi which is the second principal 
stress. So now we could go ahead and draw this element for the principal stresses. And here we have the element rotated 19.3 degrees and we have the principal stresses drawn along the appropriate axis. And keep in mind when it comes to solving for principal stresses, in that case there is absolutely no maximum shear stress or any shear stress developed for that matter. Now let's go solve for at what angle will the maximum shear stress be developed as well as the value for the maximum shear stress. So plug in the variables for the maximum shear stress equation. This is what we get, the maximum shear stress being 19.2 KSI, and we have the average normal stress being negative 15 KSI. Now for the angle where this shear stress is developed, we have this whole equation here. Once plugging in for all the values, we end up getting negative 25.7 degrees. Now the same thing as we previously have done, we could go ahead and calculate using this angle, plugging it into the plane stress transformations for solving for the shear stress, and we could see whether this maximum shear stress is going to be positive or negative because it could be either or case. So, so as a reminder, this is the plane stress transformation for the shear stress along the x, x prime, y prime. You plug in this value for the angle here that we saw for and saw for the shear stress. And we find that this shear stress or the maximum shear stress will be negative, right? This negative once you plug in and solve accordingly. So let's go ahead and draw out this element. And so here is the element ultimately having the average stress as compression along all the planes here. We have that angle theta s is equal to negative 25.7 degrees. And we have the maximum shear stress being negative 19.2 KSI. Similarly, as the principal stresses, right, the sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2, this one since it will be the smallest value, right, since we're dealing with the negative, but there's also the positive shear stress, this will be theta S2. And the other relationship was theta S1 is equal to theta S2 plus 90 degrees. We see theta S1 being equal to 64.3 degrees. Now, the only reason I bring this up is because the previous relationship that I shown was Theta S1 is equal to theta P1 plus 45 degrees, since that's the offset between the angles 45 degree angle. And you'll see that this um, will in fact meet the condition, right? Theta S1 is equivalent to 64.3 degrees because the P, theta P1 is 19.3, which is the same equivalent. And so this is how you saw for the principal stresses as well as the maximum shear stress developed um, at a particular angle for both of the cases. And it's very important for the design to make sure you're, we're accounting for the maximum shear stress developed as well as the maximum normal stresses or the principal stresses for design such that the object won't fail. And knowing the angles along where these maximum normal stresses as well as the shear stresses develop, sometimes objects may fail along that same um, direction based off the angle where the maximum shear stress is developed or the, where the principal stresses are developed. So that's one uh, fun fact there, it's pretty interesting.